Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Before the show, we do have a few quick safety reminders. Please refrain from using the front aisleways at all times during the show. We also need everyone to remain seated throughout the whole show. If you need to exit, please use the closest stairway to you and exit up and out of the stadium. Other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show and the rest of your adventure here at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. There's Mike. centuries, the tiger has roamed the jungles of Asia. With no other predators but its own kind, this lord of the jungle roamed as far west as the Caspian Sea, north into the frozen forests of Russia, and south throughout India. At the height of the tiger's reign, it numbered over 100,000, but that reign was not to last. A new predator arose to challenge the tiger, man. The tiger went from predator to prey. Today, the number less than 5,000 reduced to scattered pockets throughout Asia, and in the very near future, it could all be gone. But there are those that are trying to reverse this trend. Here at Odin's Temple of the Tiger, our goal is to show what is possible when highly trained and dedicated individuals work to create a positive environment of mutual trust and respect with the tiger. This relationship can be used to educate others and return the tiger to a place of honor, being revered for its power and strength. That relationship is what we will see today and now, here's your host for Odin's Temple of the Tiger. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the Temple of the Tiger! My name is Mike, and I'm one of the trainers here at the Temple of the Tiger. And I'm hoping that you all have a great time here this afternoon. But I'm also hoping that we learn something as well about one of the world's most endangered and beautiful animals, the tiger. Now, what we have for you today is a training session with our two youngest cats. You'll see us asking for behaviors they've already learned. You may even see us asking for new behaviors. But you will see us asking for simple behaviors over and over again, as this is what training comes down to. Loss of repetition and allowing the cats to get comfortable with what they are doing. With that being said, are you guys ready to see some tigers? All right, well, here they come. Our first cat coming out, her name is Mishka. Mishka is a two and a half year old Amor Tiger. Now, some of you might have heard them called another name, Siberian Tiger. But the reason in which they are found is called the Amor River Valley in southeastern Russia and northern China. So the more proper name for them would be the Amor Tiger. At just two and a half years old, she weighs almost 350 pounds, but she still has some growing left to do. Tigers are not considered fully mature until about four years of age, so she still has some growing there. Now you notice that she's following her own Captain Lee, and Lee is using a bottle of 2% milk to lead Mishka from location to location and station to station. Milk is a great training tool to motivate the cats for simple behaviors. And this following Captain Lee with the milk is the basis of all the behaviors here we teach at the temple. She'll just follow him around and he'll give her a reward as soon as he sits down whenever uh, he wants her to go. Now being 2% low fat, it also keeps her nice trim figure. They love the taste of the lactose sugar in the milk, but all cats are actually lactose intolerant. If you were to give your house cat at home, just a small cat full of the milk that they're getting here, you could have a very messy situation on your hands. So you have a very large litter box. But these cats being slightly larger than your cats at home, you'll have to drink gallons to feel the same effects. Now you'll see Mishka now performing what we call a fence ride. And she's already quite a bit taller than our trainers, but like I said, she still will do some growing for the next year and a half. And when she stands up, if you look very closely, you may even see those claws sticking through the fence as we neither declaw nor defang our cats. Is it? it is illegal and it can be potentially harmful to the cats. We'll have Misha go over and perform a fence rise on the other side. Now, not only does it look cool, but it's also a very valuable uh, tool when caring for our cats. Whenever they stand up on that high leg, a large leg vein will pop out on the inside of that thigh. That will allow us to go up behind the cat and draw blood if need be. Also administer vaccinations and uh, flea medication, just like you put your animals at home. Next we'll have Misha go over and station on this rock. And she'll demonstrate the tiger's agility with a jump. Now these rocks are about 10 feet apart. And tigers are pretty agile for their size. But they're not quite as agile as smaller cats, like mountain lions, leopards, or jaguars. So we'll have Mishka go back and forth a few times just to make sure she has it down. But she's a pretty good jumper and pretty energetic by doing this for us. Now also due to the size, tigers cannot climb very well. 
the claws are only about an inch to an inch and a half long. And in comparison to the rest of that body, that's not very big. But they are able to jump 10 feet straight up, as Mishka will demonstrate for us. You'll see she'll jump on up there, hang on with those razor sharp claws, grab that meat, and then come back down for a four ball landing. Now this is a behavior that is fairly new to Mishka. She's been working on it all summer. And as you can see, she's getting it down pretty well. She's pretty enthusiastic about jumping up to the top of that tree hop. Now at this point in the show, we'd like to tell you why we feel like doing a show like this is very important. As I said at the top of the show, tigers are one of the most endangered animals in the world. In fact, there are only about 3,000 left in the wild today. That's less than there are in zoos across the U.S. Now there are two main reasons the tigers are declining. Pushing and habitat loss. Now, tigers are all found on the continent of Asia, which is the highest densely populated continent in the world. And with that population expected to double in the next 30 years, there won't be a lot of room for tigers left to live. To give you an idea of how quickly this habitat is disappearing, in the Amazon rainforest, an area the size of a football field disappears every single second. That happens every day of every year. And it's the same pretty much all over the world. Next we have Maxim coming out here. This is Mishka's littermate or brother. And as you can see, Maxim's also uh, quite a bit larger than Mishka, even though they're the same age. Now going back to conservation, we'll tell you the second reason that the population is declining, and that is poaching. Poaching is otherwise known as illegal hunting. And there are two reasons that the tigers are hunted today. First, and most obvious, is for their coat. Many people think that a tiger's coat would look great as an area rug or a ball hanging. They're even been made into fashionable accessories like purses. In fact, right in the last five years, about 250,000 leopards were actually killed for their coats for fashion accessories. Now, the other reason that animals are being poached today is for their bones and internal organs. A lot of cultures think that if you ingest these body parts, you can actually cure various diseases such as acne, arthritis, and cancer. Now these benefits have been proven to be completely untrue, but these cultures have been using these methods for a number of years, and it's very difficult to convince them to do otherwise. But we here at the Temple of the Tiger think, and hopefully you all agree. In fact, let me hear you nice and loud if you agree that a tiger's coat looks better on a live tiger than somebody's wall or floor. Oh, I'm glad you agree. Now you may have also seen that we are also using red meat to reward the cats. Cats are strict carnivores, meaning they only eat red raw meat. Actually, in the course of a week, we feed out close to 1,000 pounds of meat. Now, depending on the size of the tiger, we'll get anywhere between 5 and 15 pounds once a day for six days. We actually do have a fast day where they get a large knuckle bone to chew on. They will chew on that bone, play with it. By chewing on the bone, it helps clean their teeth, and they will actually ingest pieces of the bone in the form of calcium. When tigers make a kill in the wild, they'll actually ingest parts of the entire animal. Hair, skin, bones, even the guts. Sounds pretty gross. But there is no pharmacy out there where they can go get vitamin supplements. So they get all the, everything they need from all different parts of the animal. If you were to feed these guys nothing but the muscle, they'd actually starve to death very, very slowly if they weren't ingesting all the parts they need. Now you'll be looking at the water out here and wondering, I thought cats hated water. What's up with the water? Well, for the most part, you would be right. But there are a few exceptions, and most notably the tiger. Jaguars and fishing cats also like to use the water. Now these cats will not only use the water to cool off it, but they use it as a hunting tool as well. Actually, tigers in the wild are not very successful hunters. In fact, they will only be successful about one out of every 20 chases. Imagine sprinting to the grocery store 20 times and only getting food once. That's a lot of calories burned and a lot of energy expended for no reward whatsoever. While they will eat anything they can catch, if they don't catch their prey within the first 30 to 40 yards, they're probably going to give up and wait for something else. But when they're able to chase their prey into the water, that success rate goes up to one in every five tries. Now, like all cats, they do have partially wet paws, and when they spread those, to those toes out, their feet may be the size of a dinner plate. So you can imagine with those big paws attached to those big powerful shoulders, they can't swim very quickly much faster than any prey animal such as deer or pig. So it is in their best interest to be able to chase these animals into the water. 
So not only are they fast in the water, they're also pretty fast on land, running about 35 miles an hour. So not only can you not outswim a tiger, you will not outrun a tiger. Even the fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt, only ran about 24 miles an hour when he broke the record at the Olympics. Now it is a very tough life out there for tigers. They'll be lucky to live to 10 to 12 years of age out there in the wild. There are a number of reasons, poaching and habitat loss that we talked about. Also, when these cats are young, they are in danger of being killed off by bachelor males. Now after the tigers mate, the male will go off and do his own thing, and then the females have to raise the cats for the next two years. And that's a very tough two years for these cats. Whenever they're roaming around, they may bump into a bachelor male, and that bachelor male will sometimes kill off those cubs in his territory. And then that brings the female back into heat. He'll mate with her, ensuring that his blood lines are then carried on. So it is a very tough life out there for them. Only about a quarter of the cubs born will make it to one year of age. I'm sorry, half of the cubs born make it to one year of age. Only about half of those will actually make it to adulthood and full maturity. But as you can see, these tigers are doing quite well, and I know they look cute and cuddly, but make no mistake. While uh, we do work with them on a daily basis, and our trainers do look very relaxed for the most part, we work with these animals, but it's not without risk. Now, in some states where it is legal to keep a tiger as a pet, authorities respond to about one mauling a month, usually involving a small child or the owner of the cat, in which case, most of the time, the cat is then put down. Now there are a few reasons that we are very comfortable working on these animals. We've taken a lot of time to understand them, to read body language, and it is our job as trainers to be constantly watching the cats, reading body language, looking for aggressive behavior. Most of the time we can catch it before it happens and then put it to an end. If we do have to deal with aggressive behavior, it's then our job to figure out very quickly what is causing the aggression. Many times it's over food or a toy. If you remove that stimulus from the equation, more often than not, things go back to normal. We also never want to turn our back on the cats, as they are ambush predators. They need to have to wait for something to get as close as they can to not be paying attention, and then they'll jump out at the last minute. Especially what the stripes are used for. They'll use those stripes to hide in some brush, and they do blend in very well with their environment, as most of the animals they hunt only see in black and white. So you can imagine them hiding behind a tree or some brush with those stripes, can be very difficult for an animal to see. You may also notice that these tigers have white spots on their backs of their ears. Those are called eye spots or predator spots. If a tiger were to be laying down, from behind, those two spots on the back of their ears actually look like eyeballs. Might deter another tiger from pouncing on the back of another one. So at this time, I would like to tell you all guys what you can do to help what endangered animals like the tiger. There are a number of organizations out there that help the tiger and other animal species. One here that we support at Discovery Kingdom is the Fund for the Tiger. By going to thefundforthetiger.org and spending your time or money, you can go a long way in helping animals like the tiger and therefore other animals as well. 2012 was actually a very, very bad year for poaching all around the world. Rhinos, elephants, tigers, and many other species. So they do need your help. At this time, if you have any questions, I invite you to come on down to the lower sections. We'll be hanging out on stage with the cats, so come on down if you have any questions. And on behalf of our trainers, my name is Mike. We have Captain Lee, Justin, Sean, and Maxim and Mishka. We thank you all for stopping by and hope you have a great day here at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom.